passing on that legacy. All right. That's not recorded, so that's good. A large jar contains, because I want, I want it for my special when I become famous. A large uh, jar contains many jelly beans. You draw out <clears throat> you draw out of a jar of 53 beans, so they give you the total. You don't have to figure that out. And it's ra randomly. Does it add up to 53? I hope so. Okay, phew. I'm notorious for not making sure it adds up, but it does. I, I'm pretty sure it does. So they give you a total and they give you each individual. So you know that when it's like that, I can ask you a lot of questions, right? Because not only do you know the total, you also know each individual makeup of that total, right? So based on the beans you drew out, what are the odds in favor of a jelly bean being a red bean, okay? So the odds, odds, think of dots, right? That's the first thing, and it's in favor. So that means that I'm just gonna go on the side here. It means that I want red here, and this will be not red. That's what odds do. So we go and find out there are 16, 16 reds, right? And therefore on the other side, I'm gonna go 53 minus 16, okay? That's how I, I would suggest you do it that way. There's a bit of a pattern. If you do it that way, you're always gonna get it right. Uh, what's on the other side? 37, that's right, okay? And uh, you can't really simplify that, so even if you tried, 37 is a prime, right? Uh, based on the odds against, uh, based on the odds against the jelly being, being black, that's not a worded property, but I can uh, fix that later on. So we just want the odds against a jelly bean being black, right? Against that, so we want black jelly beans here and not black here that's that's the way it's worded tells you this is the setup i need so we're gonna go uh, nine and this is 53 minus nine right so that would be 44 to nine that's right what we need to have there what is the experimental probability that a jelly bean is red okay. Experimental probability that a jelly bean is red. So probability of red, uh, we have 53. Probability, right? Not odds. So we have uh, 16 red. So we'll just leave it like that. That's what you need to put down there, okay? Um, are you wondering what, what's up with an experimental? Anybody? Did you read that? You're like, what's up with that? I, I'm going to cover it soon. You wanted to... Um, yeah, okay. well, not, you don't get bonus marks, but you get the mark. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it wouldn't be wrong to do it as long as you do it correctly. Um, all right, so if there are 2,500 jelly beans, right, how, would you, how many would you expect to be red? So I already set it up. So this is also, everything is worth one mark so far. So we would just go 16 over 53. Multiply that by 2,500. I'd always suggest you use the fraction here. So we use all decimals, all right? And so I need to do that because I do not have the key for this one because it's a new one. I always make new ones. 754.71 something. And that's approximately 754 or 755. Uh, beans, right? Jelly beans are also classic. Jelly beans, marbles, spinners, cards, die or dice, right? Those are always classic probability examples. Okay? Uh, a sports uh, betting site says that the odds, okay, in what? In favor, not against, of the Jets winning the Stanley Cup are 1 to 25. <clears throat> that tells you that it's win, and this is not winning, right? Not win for now. It's not proper, but we're going to talk about it in those terms. What are the odds against them winning the Stanley? Do you, you just flip it, right? If you already have the odds and now it's against, you just flip it, right? Based on these odds, what's the probability that the Jets will win the Stanley Cup? So probability of winning, 
right? You go one plus 25, like you add them up. That's your total. And one, one would be the winning chances of winning the outcome that you want. So it's one over 26, not 25. It's one. If you have 25, you get, it's not right. Even though you're like, I'm only off by one, right? It, it is crucial. You get the 26 in there uh, to get this mark. Okay. A weather forecaster says that the probability of rain tomorrow is 60%. Uh, what is the probability that it does not rain? So probability of not raining is 40%. If it's raining, then 40% not raining. One mark. Uh, you can also write this as 40 over 100, right? You can write it as 0 0.4. It doesn't matter, but they're all correct. What are the odds, not is the odds, autocorrect, right? Uh, what are the odds in favor of rain tomorrow? Odds. Well, if, uh, if it's 60, yes, what goes on the other side? 40 or 100 minus 60, right? 60 to 40. 6 to 4. You can divide them both by 10. You can divide them both by 20. Right? Uh, so it's okay, but uh, right now we're just going to leave it. That one, this one, uh, if you had a hard time with that one, because I, I didn't quite cover it yet. So I'm going to make this a bonus. Okay, so this is going to be a bonus plus one if you get that right. So let's do the, I'm just going to count one for each. So one, two, three, four five, six, seven. So basically, this whole page is seven. You can potentially score eight out of seven if you get that last one right. Because I didn't, I know some of you probably knew how to do it, but uh, I didn't cover it. I'm going to cover that today in a bit more detail. How to go from a probability to odds, okay? Name and last name. And uh, please pass it forward, right? Pass it, pass it forward. Who would accept it today? So technically, 60% is 0 0.6, right? Technically, you have 0 0.6 and 0 0.4. It happening, it not happening. So you could write 0 0.6 to 0 0.4. That would be, in, a, in essence, it would be okay. But we don't like that. So you can multiply both sides by 10 let's say and get six to four or something like that right uh, so from now on i wouldn't accept decimals as part of either probability or odds okay it's a good question i have a highlighter ready you never know so when you're going from probability to odds we went from odds to probability, now we're going the other way. So you have this probability, this, <clears throat> it will usually just be two numbers, right guys? You're with me? Uh, and so from there, you can answer two things. You can uh, answer odds in favor, or you can say odds against. But watch what happens, right? A is what, I'm just gonna put the, I'm gonna highlight A, right? That would go if it's odds in favor, you want A on the left side. If it's odds against, you want A on the other side of the fence, so to speak. Okay. And once you figure out, like, focus on the event it's talking about. Is it, uh, you know, odds of getting a yellow, odds of winning. Focus on that event, put it where it's supposed to be, and then the other side. Right, you go total minus what you put down. So that we call that not A. So same here. You would always, if it's odds against, you put down the event against you on the other side of the fence, and then you worry about figuring out not A. Right? So that's the key to success. Focus on the event, then focus on it not happening. And I will try to give you a more concise, like a quick, a quick method to put this on your study sheet without words, just with numbers. And then you'll see, okay, going this way, okay, got it. Going this way, numbers, okay, add, subtract, do whatever you need.
uh, to come up with that, okay? And here's your total, right? You always go, the, the when it's a probability, you know this is the total possible outcomes that can, can happen. So we use it to subtract, right? Um, is there anything else I wanna say here? Nope, we're good. Okay, let's talk about the probability of a plane crashing is estimated to be 1 in 11 million flights. I wish that 11 million was even bigger. 11 billion flights, but 1 in 11 million. I just got it off the internet. I don't know how accurate this is. You know the internet, right? You can't. But let's just use it for an example here. Um, state the odds of a plane crashing. So odds of crashing in favor of, right? You read this, you're like, okay, it's the odds in favor of crashing. So you would say crash would therefore go on the left side, and this is this would be not crashing, right? Would go on the right side, the way it's worded. Okay, so now we have a recipe. We just need to plug in the numbers in the right place. So what would go on the left side? The one, right? There's a one chance of it happening. And on the other side... We take the total, so there's 11 million, 11 followed by six zeros, right? And we will take away one. So I know it seems so like I'm just off by one. What's the big deal? In this unit, it's a big deal, right? Like it shows me you understand what needs to be done. So one in, this would be 10 million, 999,000. 999 okay so that that would be the odds of of crashing in favor of a plane crash sounds like we want it to happen right like we don't want it to happen but that's how you work when it's worded like that that's what you want right right next door odds against a plane crashing Circle crashing and on both both of those scenarios because that's the event we're focusing on. So if it's odds against crashing, then I want that, whatever it is, on the other side of the fence. And so not crashing. I don't have room for crashing, so it's just not crash. Okay. Um, and so basically you just flip this one, right? We don't need to do anything else. We could if we wanted to. Start from scratch. Do you want? I don't know. I feel like uh, it might be too much. So I'm just going to go based on what I already have and just flip the order of the numbers. Because okay? I already did some work. So there we go. That's what I'm after there. And so remember, probability can be given as a percentage, it can be given as a decimal, it shouldn't affect how we do things, how we operate. So the probability of a student passing the probability unit test is 95%. That means, I'm, I don't like percentages, so I'm just going to rewrite it as a fraction. If it's percent, we know it's over 100 So, basically this is saying that out of 100 students writing the test, 95 will pass, right? That's basically what it's saying. So now, what are the odds, state the odds of a student passing, right? This is what we're focusing on, odds of passing. So that means that we'll have pass on the left and pass with a bar on top. Remember, right, that means not same thing so passing would be 95 and on the other side 100 moving on and you should be like uh nope this is minus 95 but this is the most common mistake like over and over like i'll mark a whole test because if students miss this they'll miss it entirely the whole test and so you lose tons of marks right so you gotta go minus 95, yes. You gotta go 95 to five, like that. You can reduce that, Both five goes into both of them. Let's just do it. This one isn't too bad. 
So that would be 19 to 1, right? reduced. Okay, that would be a reduced um, odd. Okay, state the probability against a student passing. How would we do this? So I'm mixing things up. This is probability now. Against, so probability of not passing. You've got options here. You can even just look at, at that number here and just know it's 100% minus 95%. So it would be 5% like that. That's probably the quickest way of doing it right now. Some of you probably just looked at the 95 and knew it was five, right? So whatever you need to do, remember they add up to 100%. It happening, it not happening. So it probably is a little easier. State the odds of a student not passing the unit test. Odds in favor of not passing. It's a little confusing, right, the wording here? Odds in favor of not passing. So we're focusing, this is the event we're focusing on. In favor of not passing, that means that it's not passing will come up first and pass will go next. Right, so I'm gonna make an arrow. Hey, that is the event it's focusing around. So not passing, which one would we do first? Uh, based on the values I have, I would put the 95 here, and this would be 100 minus 95. 95 to 5 like this, and we can divide both of them by 5, so it's 1 to 19. And you're like, isn't it just the previous one flipped? Yeah, it is. But I just want to kind of show you, like, be careful with the wording. Odds of, okay, got it. That means that the event that's coming next is going to be on the left side. What is that event? Not passing. Okay, that comes first. And then the other one comes next. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So let's go to page 22. I'm going to do this one more example, and then I'm going to let you... Uh, Try a few on your own. And if it seems like I'm mixing stuff up, it, it I'm actually doing that, right? I'm mixing a bunch of things together here. So read 22, uh, the top here. Watch what it says. The odds, we know what that looks like. The odds against a smart TV being defective, right? Let's underline odds, underline against. And what's the event we're after? A TV being defective, right? Something being broken. The odds against being broken is 20,000 to 3. So where would defective be here? On which side? Against, right? On the right side. Yeah. So let's make an arrow go to it. And so that's defective or broken, right? If you don't like the word defective, we'll just say broken. So these these twenty thousand are good ones, right? Uh, good. TVs, I'm just gonna, or not defective, right? But we'll just go on. And it would make sense, right? No company would work if 20,000 TVs are broken and three are good ones, right? It just wouldn't work very, for very long. Uh, if the company produces 64,000 TVs per month, how many would be defective in a year? This is a very loaded <laughs> question. How would you start? Do you see that we're making a prediction? Do you see that? We're going to predict how many are broken on the long run. So let's make a prediction. Prediction. 
we're going to go probability of defective times large sample. This is how you do a prediction, right? How do we come up with the probability of being defective? We just have odds. How do we get probability? Well, what's the first thing you need to do? The denominator will be, what do you do with these two numbers? You add them, right? So you add these two together. Let's do that, 20,000 plus three. And which event goes on top? The defective, so we're gonna grab the three. And um, we're gonna multiply that by, I'm gonna go 64,000 TVs. Because I'm gonna be tight on space, I'm gonna go sideways here. Or, uh, I'll be fine, I'll be fine. So we'll go three over 20,003, and you might think it's only three, like what's the big deal, Mr. Jackson, I missed it, right? I just put 20,000 in the denominator. In this unit, it matters, very, very much so. It's not like a rounding mistake. It's a concept, right? So we take this and we multiply by 64,000, and what do we get? I'm gonna go three divided by 20,003, we did predictions a long time ago already, right? So that's not new. The only thing that's new is coming up with this probability right here. That's the only new part. So I divide that, it's a very small chance of that happening. Then I multiply it by 64,000. By the way, stop, stop. If I ever ask you to state this as a decimal, don't round to two decimals, right? Because you're gonna get 0, 0.00, right? Just give me, like just go as far as you can to have some significant numbers in there. It doesn't happen very often, but if it does, uh, so now I'm gonna multiply that by 64,000. So that means that I'll have 9.598 um, defective TVs. This is what, in a month or in a year? 64,000 per month. So this is how many defective TVs in one month. For one month. How many do we have in a year? Right, just multiply that by 12 months. You notice that I haven't rounded yet because I'm still working with that number. So you just go times 12. This would be like a three mark question, by the way. So I multiply it by 12. So that would be 115.18 something, which is approximately 115 or 116 TVs, right? Uh, defective TVs per year. So this company, based on the quality control that they perform, or warranty claims that are coming in, for whatever reason, they can expect to have that many broken TVs. Yes? Yeah. That's that's fine, no problem. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna stop for a bit here. Pause. Um, I need you to. If a fan out there is watching it, right? They need to know what's happening. Um, page 23 says determine which event is more likely to happen. Okay. So I'm kind of combining turning odds to probability. Right? I want you to, for example, find the probability of being attacked by a shark. And I want you to state it in three ways. Right? Probability of being attacked by hornets. That's coming up too, right? 
that's always uh, August is just can't even eat outside, right? There's the three formats. So, and then I want you to tell me which one of these two is <clears throat> more likely to happen based on your answer. And the answer is the higher, the higher percentage is going to be the one that's more likely to happen, right? So I'm, I'm combining that. I'm even doing some cards on page 24. So I'll give you some time to do that <clears throat> and then we'll reconvene, okay? Make sure you try it. You need me to hold your hand, right? That's okay. At some point, you'll let go. That's fine. All right, let's, uh, let's talk about this. Probability of going blind after laser eye surgery is one in five million. State the odds of going blind after surgery, right? So odds in favor of going blind, basically, right? So blind, not blind. Okay, I would suggest you do that, right? For now, just make sure you know where things go. So that'd be one to five million minus one, right? So that is what you're supposed to state there. Very important for you to get that right. State the odds against going blind, flip that one. And then in this case, you would get full marks, whatever you got up here, if you flip it here, Full marks, right? State the probability against going blind after surgery. Probability against going blind. So it's basically, this is going way back, way back to when we started this unit. So there's a couple ways you can say, hey, I'm gonna take the total. Remember not going blind, right? Not grabbing a red marble. So maybe like, I, I wanna get rid of the one chance of going blind, right? So I'm just going to put it like that. And this is uh, 4,999,999 over 5 million. Okay. Um, you could go 1 over 5 million. That, that's a very small decimal. Take that away from 1 and then get it that way. Right? That's also okay to do. All right, keep going. And this one, yes, I, I will agree that you probably struggle with the small numbers, right? It's just a weird, but I wanted you to see that probability isn't always a nice, like one over 50, one over, right? It's sometimes millions, right? Um, it's the, the total is quite big. I don't know how they calculate these things, to be honest, or how they come up with it. Careful here, determine which one is more likely to happen. The best way, right, best way is to determine the probability. Uh, I would actually say get it to a percent. That's the best way to do these ones. So here we go. I'm giving you two odds, right? Uh, state the probability of being attacked by a shark. So probability of shark. I'm thinking of the song Baby Shark. Doo, doo, doo. I don't know if you, if you have, if, if you have young kids, you'll know what I'm talking about. Maybe you'll just know because you're. These days, everybody's so plugged in to what's out in the world. Zero six eight, right? So this is a weird one, right? You type this into your calculator, and you're probably like, I don't know about this one. Um, Yeah, so I would write the whole thing down if I were you. Right? So how many zeros? Let's count them. Six zeros. Very small chance of that happening. So that would be as a decimal. I multiply that by 100, right? Comma. It's just going to shift over to decimal. So now you have 0 0.1234. 2668%. So yeah, it's weird. It's not going to happen very often, but that's okay. We should be able to handle it. And so next, state the probability of being attacked by hornets. I kill some every fall, 
they come in here. So that's cabin life, guys. Cabin life is tough. Um, 1 over 1 plus 54,093. The weird thing is everybody, like my students panic when they see a hornet. It's like, don't panic. Just relax. They can sense it. Right? So here's your probability of getting attacked by hornets. I just add up right, both numbers. Let's get that as a decimal. Zero point one two three four zeros one eight four eight six, and I'm going to multiply that by hundred. That's zero point zero zero one eight four eight six three three percent. So that's just weird, right? But which one is more likely to happen? Which one is a bigger number? This one is, right? More likely to happen. More likely. I think a lot of you could tell already, as you saw the fraction, that that's going to be the case, uh, which is more likely to happen. Um, being attacked by hornets. Uh, since the probability is greater. So a weird example, but I, I wanted to sneak in a one that is kind of weird, small numbers to wrap our heads around that one. The odds of Xavier being late is four to nine. The odds of Nina being late is five to 14. Which one is more likely to be late? So we'll go do a case study. So probability of late for Xavier is four, because the way it's worded, right? Odds of being late, that means that the four stands for late, the nine is being on time or not late, right? So that's four plus nine. See how I sneak in the being late into my lesson? So don't be late. Uh, four over 13, right? And for Nina, it's 5 over 5 plus 14, and that's 5 over 19. It's tough right now, so that's why I would suggest turn it into a percentage. So basically, 4 divided by 13 times 100, that's 30.77%, if you round it to two decimals, right? 7, 6, 9. And then 5 divided by 19 times 100, that's 26.32% chances of being late. So now it's very clear, right? Like you can tell that Xavier is more likely, right? Xavier is more likely to be late. Yeah, I think for this particular question, I would have been okay with it because it's not asking to actually state the probability of Xavier being late. You're just doing the, showing the work to come up with it. Yeah. Let's keep going. Did you do this one? I hope you tried this one. It's not that hard. Which one is more likely to happen? I'm just going to do a couple. The rest um, I will scan and post all the pages from 22 to 24. Forgot to do that. Um, so probability of a red 7, R7, what would that be? How many red 7s are there? Two. All right. Out of deck of cards, 52, right? I will make that. Sometimes I'll say it's just consider... Uh, cards numbered 1 to 10, so it's just 10 cards in there. But if it's not saying anything, you always assume it's 52. Probability of Jack. How many Jacks? What are, are you talking about? The one in the car or? Okay. 4 or 52, yeah. You can tell that uh, Jack is more likely to happen, right? Because both fractions have the same denominator. 
I'm still going to go ahead and I'm just going to go 0 0.0385 or 3.85 percent. This one I'm just going to tell you is 0 0.0769 or 7.69 percent. Okay, this one is more likely. More likely to happen. Bigger percentage, more likely to happen. Okay. I introduce uh, spinners, I introduce dice, I do a bunch of things here. Drawing a face card or rolling a five? Face card, probably a face. How many face cards? The front row knows. You know? 12, right? 12, 52. Uh, I'm going to turn that into a decimal and percent. I already did the work, so I'm just going to give you what that is. And probability of rolling a five is one in six. We're assuming is a standard die, right? We that's a standard deck never has jokers. Yeah, I would have to tell you that that I'm using them as well. Uh, that's 0 0.1667, which is 16.67%. Which one is more likely to happen? Just more likely. Um, obviously, the face cards, because it's a little higher percentage. Okay. Uh, the rest, I'm just going to give you the answers for, right? Is that okay if I just do that right now? So here we go. Uh, I did talk about multiples, right? Multiples of four or five, yeah? So I'm just going to give you the answers here. If you want to write that down, take a moment. There. So uh, a club face cart. That, sorry. You can write it down, okay? So there are three, for the, the suit of clubs, there are only three face cards. So you turn that to 5.77. Probability of spinning yellow based on this spinner here is one in eight, right? Let me just move that over. Right, one in eight. So between these two, doing getting the spinner is the better choice. Rolling a multiple of three or the spinner landing on green. So if it's a multiple of three, then it's number three and six. It's a standard die. So there's only two options. So two out of six, which is one third, which ends up being 3.33. And landing on green, there are two green sections out of eight. That's a quarter. That's, oh, what happened there? That's not, that's 0.25, which is 25%, okay? I'm going to tell you what's going to happen down the road. We're going to be pulling cards and not putting them back. So that's going to affect the next outcome if I were to draw another card. It affects your outcome. Right now, you will notice that the deck of cards is always 52. But what if someone already pulled a card? from the deck. You wouldn't have 52 anymore, it's 51, right? So it, it will change a little bit. Oh, I didn't tell you which one is more likely to happen here. So it would be this one, right? More likely to happen. I'm always too ambitious with uh, what I want to cover. But I feel like if I if I start the next section, it's going to backfire. So I'm just going to stop here. You can handle that, right? Um, there's still page 25, though. You can still work on that. It, I, I compared Daniel Mack uh, and Calvin, who's going to win the tournament between sister Daniel Mack and Calvin. So there's three things, three odds that you need to take into account. Okay. 
I'm just going to show you the, the key so you can look at it at least. If you're, if I don't post it, just go to this video, go to the very back, right? Whoa, whoa, what's happening here? So if, for example, here, I give you the probability of the Bombers and the Elks winning the Great Cup. And I want you to write both probabilities as odds for and against. So I do Bombers on this side here. Elks on that side here. So you should be able to do the same thing. And between Sisler Keller and Daniel Mack, obviously Sisler is going to win. The bigger chance of winning. Right? I'm biased when I make these questions. No, I'm just saying that telling the truth, right? I'm not biased. I'm telling the truth. And is everything on there? No. I still need the bottom part. So I don't know if you're writing this down or not, but uh, I'm going to scan and post these as well. So if you kind of felt like I was rushing through the answers, I'm going to post them and then make sure they're in your notes, okay?